morning, New Life. Welcome to our online church experience. We are so glad that you're tuning in with us today, and our hope is that this service brings you encouragement as we spend time worshiping together and hearing what God has in store for us today. But before we get to that, we've got a couple of announcements. If you've not signed up yet for one of our online small groups, don't worry. There's still plenty of room available. All you have to do is head on over to our website and sign up to join. Hey dads, you know what is just around the corner? A free gift from us to you to celebrate just how awesome we think you are. So head on over to nlpa.ca to register right now. For all of our junior and senior high students, we've got some awesome things going on for you each week over on our youth Instagram page. There's weekly challenges, devotionals, Zoom chats, porch drop-offs, and so much more. You're definitely gonna wanna check it out. For all of our kids out there in JK to grade five, we've got some fun things going on for you too. You can follow our New Life Kids Facebook page for weekly activities, devotionals, and our Sunday lessons. We also have been doing weekly porch deliveries that you can sign up for on our website if you've not already been receiving them. If you're looking for a way to give, we have an e-transfer option as well. Simply add New Life to your e-transfer list using the email epay at nlpa.ca. You can do this through your banking website or your banking app. If you require more assistance, please email us at info at nlpa.ca and we'd be happy to help. We will also be offering an on-site option Mondays and Tuesdays between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can also use that same email for any of your needs or prayer requests that you may have. We have a dedicated group of people who will be praying for your needs and would love to come alongside of you and help out any way that we can. Every week you can check out our Facebook or YouTube pages to follow along with our services. Our prayer is that this online experience today brings you great encouragement and hope to your life.
stressed out. Now, can I ask you a question? Sure. How much time have you spent with God this week? Spent with God? Like, reading my Bible? Yeah, spending some time in God's Word, taking a moment out of your day, you know, just to pray with Him, be in conversation with Him. Hmm. <laughs> I actually don't know the last time I did any of that stuff, to be honest. Like I told you a minute ago, I'm pretty busy. I, I, I know, I hear that. Another question for you. It's about your phone. My phone? Yeah. Do you ever charge it? Yeah, that's a really silly question, Paul. I mean, I know it's dead right now, but I couldn't keep track of my schedule, my to-do list, talk with my friends. I couldn't make TikToks. I couldn't do any of that stuff if it was dead all the time. So what you're saying is that you need to plug it into a power source on a regular basis in order for it to be useful. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Paul. I just don't know what you're getting at. Well, there's a story in the Bible all about a really busy woman. It's actually found in Luke 10, 38-42. It's about two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Jesus was traveling along and he stopped in the village these two sisters lived in. And <clears throat> they welcomed Jesus into their home. Her sister Mary was there, and Jesus was hanging out in the living room. She sat down right at his feet, and, they just, and she just listened to what he had to say all day. Martha, however, was running all over the place, preparing food and things, and she was getting quite frustrated that her sister was just hanging out with Jesus. So, she finally got fed up enough and went over and asked Jesus if he cared that she was so busy with the things and her sister was just sat there doing nothing. I would be too if I had to do that all by myself. Cleaning, making dinner, setting the table. The thing was, Jesus told her that she was worried and busy with so many things, yet there was only one thing that she actually needed to be worried about or busy about. What else would there be to do? Dinner needed to be made. I mean, Jesus was at their house. That's right. Jesus said that the thing that was most necessary was exactly what Mary was doing though. Jesus was in the house. Mary wanted to soak in every moment of that. 
every word he had to say, story he had to tell. Jesus was trying to get Martha to see that the most important thing we need on our to-do list is time with him. So what you're saying is I'm too busy? What I am saying is we can get caught up in life sometimes with the endless things that we feel like we need to do and the things that we need to fill our schedule with. But we will eventually run on empty, just like our phone. If you don't plug it into a power source, it doesn't do you any good. Jesus is telling us in this story that we need to make the time and make it a priority to plug ourselves into Him. I think you're right. I've been running on pretty much empty these days. I appreciate you pointing that out to me, Paul. Um, I'm sure if I actually had spent more time reading my Bible, I probably would have known that story and wouldn't have felt so drained. Well, no problem. And you haven't done anything wrong. I'm just looking out for you. You mind passing me your charger? I'd yeah. like to plug in this battery. Sure. No. The other charger. Ah, I see. Here you go. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's the Tansleys. We, we miss, miss you, New Life! Hello from the house family! Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night from the from Sinclair the family. Hey. Hi folks, I'm Doris Rome, and I'm lonesome to see all of you from New Life. And I want to thank you very much for your kind attention during this difficult time. And I especially want to mention the phone call. The first week there was a problem, my pastor was the first one to call me. Thanks, Pastor, you set a good example. But many followed, and it's just been such a nice thing to receive call calls from people that I've never received from before. So I'm even putting your name in a book. See you soon, we hope. Many things about tomorrow we don't seem to understand. But we know who holds tomorrow, and I know he holds our hand. Thank you.
when
This is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my us through this storm and you've already seen the end and how great it'll be, God. We thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, everybody. It is the middle of the week for me, but I know it's Sunday morning in your family room and I am looking at the forecast for Sunday and I am hoping it is correct. It is supposed to be 20 four degrees and sunny right here, right now, and I'm praying that happens. I don't know about you, but this past weekend on Victoria Day, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'm glad it rained because our vegetables needed it, but I think we just need a little more sunshine. And so I'm praying that we're blessed this weekend as God blesses all of us, but that we get a little bit of sunshine this weekend. Well, I want to start off by just doing a really quick announcement. Um, We are doing a food drive. We're going to be part of One Church Food Drive, and I would love for you to help us out. If you could sign up, um, we're just looking for a few more families to help us make this happen, Uh, but if you could sign up on our website, you can go to where it says sign in. Uh, You'll see there the food drive. We're just looking for people to hand out flyers one weekend and then help collect food the next weekend. Uh, Let's just be honest, our food banks need our help. And so I would love it if our church family would jump in. Uh, We've already signed up to do it. Many of you have already jumped in. We just need a few more families. So if you could do that, uh, that would be great. Uh, We thank God for you. Uh, We are in a series, and we've been talking about this for the last four weeks. This is week five of the series. It's called My Best Life. It's this idea that in this time in, in history where everything just seems to be so wild, what if we took this moment and allowed ourselves to become more like Christ, allow him to transform us so that we could truly be who God's called us to be. So week one, we talked about being more self-aware. God has created you and I to be something. And if we could just be more self-aware in the things that God has built within us that we need to change, we will change. But the things that God has placed in our lives, 
that are who we are, that we would cultivate them and allow them to be more of who he's called us to be. We talked about anxiety week two. I mean, let's be honest, this is a hard season for many people. And in this season, you may be struggling with anxiety. My prayer is that God would show you the ways to deal with it so that on the other side of this, you will be able to have your best life. The week, week three was my wife and I talking about dealing with change. We kind of feel like we've been forced into change. But the truth of the matter is God has, is in all of this. And so how do we deal with change when we're not sure? And last week, we talked about growing in your faith. I need you to know the best thing you can do in this season is to grow in your faith. Get closer to God. Be reading your Bible. Allow him to transform you. Today, we're going to talk about dreaming for the future. What it is to dream for the future. See, for me growing up, I always had dreams of what I wanted to be when I grew up. One of them was I definitely wanted to be a firefighter. It just looked so cool on TV. I wanted to be a police officer. I wanted to make sure that I made the NHL and be a hockey player. Like that's, I dreamt about some of these things that I just wanted to be. I wanted to be a race car driver for a short period of time because it just looked like so much fun to be able to go as fast as you want around the track. At one point, I thought, man, it would be really cool to be on Saved by the Bell, if you remember that show. I wanted to be on TV. I thought it would be so neat. And here I am right now in your houses, on your computer, on your TV screens, and I don't like it. You see, the truth of the matter is we have these big dreams, and we dream for the future and the things that we could and want to do. But I need you to know that in my, as I've grown up and as I've looked at my life, I always believed that the future mark would be amazing. But what if in this season, God's saying, you can still dream for the future because today my dreams have become more of a, well, I'm thinking realistically. So when I look at my life, I think of certain things that I would, I want or things that I could probably attain. Dreaming big is hard to do, but I, it's things that I know I could possibly make happen. I remember there was a period in my life where I really wanted a motorcycle. I sat with Arnie Small this week, and we talked about what it would be to, to be able to ride a motorcycle. Like, I always wanted one. I remember saving up enough money that I could purchase a motorcycle, and I finally convinced my wife it was a good idea. I got to the place where we were thinking about what we were going to purchase and how it was going to happen, and my transmission went in my car. I remember thinking to myself, well, I could still buy a motorcycle because I can get around. But my wife said to me, how are you going to drive a motorcycle in the dead of winter? See, the truth of the matter is we can dream about certain things and, and want certain things and things that are attainable, but sometimes life just throws us a wrench and it doesn't seem to come together the way we thought it would. During this season in our lives, I don't know about you, but the thoughts of, of, of what I've been dreaming about is just I want to make it through COVID-19, however long this season lasts, I just, I just want to make it through it. You know, there's been parts of me that think about, well, one of my dreams is that we could go for dinner in a restaurant again, and what would that be like? I've thought about, you know, things that I could do or things that I could be, and, and I've thought about, you know, what is it going to look like when we get back as a church in a service in this building? I mean, I've dreamt about those things because I know they're a little bit attainable. I've dreamt about heaven. I don't know about you, but in this season with the way things are, I've thought so much about what heaven will be like because it's not so easy here. You see, we can often dream for the future and sometimes our dreams will be dictated with, by what we're dealing with. And you may be here today finding it hard to dream. Because of the uncertainty, you're finding it hard to dream for the future. But what if in this moment, God was calling you and I to dream big. What if the God of the universe had such a great plan for our lives that if we could see past this moment, we know that God's plans could come through. God's plans are for us. God's not finished with you or I just because of this season. And God has still built you and I for great things. We just have to trust him. There's this moment in the Bible, and we're going to be looking at David's life. I mean, David gets anointed to be king and then becomes a king. What is it like to know that God has anointed you and I for something and believing that he will and we will see it through? We're going to read today in 
1 Samuel, verse 16. And it goes like this. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn and o- with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said to him, take a heifer with you and say, I am coming to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived in Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him and asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, I come in peace. I have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Elab and thought, surely the Lord anointed stands here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Men look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. When God was calling this moment, Samuel realized that he was supposed to anoint somebody as king. It was going to be one of Jesse's boys. He didn't know which one, but he knew it was going to be one of them because God had said it. And the moment he sees this one tall, strong man, he says, it's got to be this one. But God allows him to understand that God looks at everything differently. I need you to know today that God has anointed you for something great. And in this season, it may not look the way you thought it would look, but what if we could see past the way we see things and see it the way God does? In verse 10, it goes on further. It says, Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. You see, there's this moment where Samuel looks at all these guys. And I mean, Jesse, David's dad, looks at these kids and says, it's got to be one of these ones doesn't even think about his youngest boy. And Samuel says, I have none of these. God has not chosen any of these. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I have felt like, what makes me any good for this? But sometimes God's got a plan, and nobody else can see it, but God sees something in you. It goes on further in verse 12. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruby with fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. You see, here's this moment for David. He's been anointed to be king. Nobody else saw it. His own dad didn't see it. But he's been anointed to be king. What if today you realized that you were anointed? What if you realized today that God had a plan and a future that he had for your life? What has God been saying or what has God said in the past to allow you to know that God has set you apart for something different? You know, in this moment, you would think, well, David, it would have all been perfect from this moment on. Like David's life would have made a lot of sense. I mean, he gets anointed as king, and it's just a matter of time now before he becomes king, and it's all going to be okay. Well, the truth of the matter is, scholars tell us that he was anointed anywhere between the ages of 10 and 15. 
That's when he was anointed as king. He did not take on the authority as king until he was, he was 30 years old. 2 Samuel verse 5 tells us in verse 4, David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years. 17 years approximately is, is how long it took for David to become king. 17 years of waiting for the promise that he was anointed to do. Samuel anointed him. He knew it was going to happen, but he had 17 years ahead of him. Now, here's the thing. If I was between 10 or 15, I wouldn't want it right away. I mean, it would be a lot of pressure at 15 years old to be king. And you would think, well, okay, if he just took a few years to kind of grow up a little bit, and it would make some sense. So 17 years may not be that bad. But during the journey, David had so many things he had to come up against. I mean, you know of David and Goliath. David has now been put in front of this giant, and he's going to slay a giant. And Saul tries to put on his armor and says, David, you've got to wear this armor into the battle. And David, it's just too big for him. So David slays a giant with a slingshot and a rock. Now, we know how the story ends, and the giant dies, and David is victorious. But what did it look like in the moment when David's saying, I'm going to fight a giant? What was he feeling? What was the anxiety that was going through his mind? Did he question, God, do you still have a plan for me? Or is this how it's going to end? But he came out of that fight victorious. And we know this how the story ends. Saul and David become very close. I mean, the Bible says that David played the harp and it caused Saul's spirit to just, just relax. And in them becoming close, he was given wisdom and insight that Saul would be able to give him. But then all of a sudden, there comes a place where that all changes. Everything changes and Saul becomes jealous of David. Now, can you imagine what it would be like to be in the palace, knowing that this throne would be your throne someday? Knowing that, that the things that were happening, you may do differently or you would see differently. And this is what, what David has to face. And then all of a sudden, as he's being a good servant to Saul, as he's being faithful to Saul, Saul turns on him. David ends up running for his life because Saul tries to kill him. Can you imagine what he would have been thinking in this season of his life? God, you've anointed to me be, to be king, but now the king, the one I trusted, the one that loved me, he's trying to kill me. Can you imagine what would be running through his mind and the difficulty that he would have been facing? And I wonder if in that season he said, God, am I still meant to be king? Or is this how it's going to end for me? He wanders around and lives in caves and struggles through through these moments, and I wonder if David wondered what this would look like. There's three questions that I want to ask you today. First is, how do you keep dreaming when things don't happen the way you thought they would? Like in this season, it's so different. How do you keep dreaming? The next question is this, has God given you a dream that you have forgotten about because you're in this season? Is there things that God has told you, things that God has said to you, and you've said, I just forgot about it because I'm so distracted because of this season? And the next one is this. Have you stopped thinking and dreaming about the future? Have you stopped looking to say what the future is going to look like? I think it's so easy in this time in history to not be thinking about the future because all we're trying to do is survive. But what if God had much more for you and I than just survival? I wonder if David stopped dreaming during his difficult times. Or did he keep believing that the anointed moment when he was anointed to be king would still happen? David went 15 years and if at the end of all of this, when he is crowned as king, would he look back at the years that he struggled and say it was totally worth it because God had a plan through it all? I believe 
we will get on the other side of this. I believe that we will see God do something incredible in this season, and we will get to the other side of it. I believe that you and I, God has placed dreams and visions and plans for our lives that are still going to come to pass. We have to believe in this moment that we are anointed for the future. So what is God saying? What is God saying to you? What is God asking of you? And what has God said in your past? What are the dreams that God has placed in your heart or the things that he has anointed, he has placed you set apart for? What are those things and have you lost sight of them because of this season? And I believe in this moment, as we're talking about my best life, we need to bring back the dreams and the visions and the things that God has anointed you and I to do and not allow the enemy to destroy it. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. What have you been praying about? What are those plans for? Maybe God's got a perfect job for you. Maybe it's a promotion at work. Maybe you're out of a job right now and you're looking for a job and I need you to know that God has a plan for you and the perfect job is just waiting there for you. It's just God's timing. But what if in this season we still believe that God had a plan and that the job was going to be there? What about your family? Maybe there's people that you've been praying would come to know Christ. Do you believe that that can still happen? Has God tucked something in your heart to believe that your kids or your friends would come to know Christ and in this season you would believe and trust that God will come through because he has a plan for you and for them? What about your house? Some of you today may be wondering how I'm going to pay for my mortgage or how I'm going to pay for things. But what if God had placed a moment in a house ready for you or a home for you? I still remember Growing up as a boy, my parents always wanted to buy a house. My parents were in their mid-40s before they ever got to buy their first house. But I remember my mom always saying, I believe with all my heart that God is going to bless us with a house that we can use to share the gospel, that we can use to be a place where people can come and and just really grow in their faith and, and that we would be able to have people over and use it for God's glory. When they got their first house, they started a young adults group with our church. And they have 30 to 40 young adults in the basement because God had blessed them with a house. What if God has still got a blessing for you and he's got dreams and future for you, but we forget it because we're in this season? What if God's got ministry for you? People that you're called to. Maybe God's calling you to full-time ministry. What does that look like? And have you given up on it because of this season? Or are you able to see past it and realize that the future is still bright and God still has a plan? Maybe it's an entrepreneurship. Maybe God's called you to do something just wild. And in this season, what if you started dreaming again and saying, God, what are the things that you've got for me? What are the things I'm going to be able to do? And what if in this season, God started giving you dreams and visions for the future? I believe very strongly that the enemy wants to sidestep anything that God wants to have happen. I believe that the enemy would try and distract us as much as we possibly can be distracted from the future and the plans that God has. I don't know about you, but I don't want to take the dreams that God has given me and lose sight of them because what if I power through this moment and don't let the enemy try and destroy what God has for him and for me What if I could see it through and get to the other place? There's five things that I think will help us keep dreaming, that will help us get through this season and get to the other side and believe that God will see us through. The first one is, God picked you for this dream. God picked you for the dreams that he has. God has anointed you. God has a future for you, and God sees something in you. During this season, I want to be honest with you. As a pastor, as your pastor, I have thought these words 
it would be so much easier if I just pastored 20 years ago. If I was 20 years ago and, and, and I, had, I had pastored then, I would be so much better off because I wouldn't have to face this this way. Because this is a hard season to pastor. A lot of my pastor friends that I'm talking to are struggling because this is just really difficult. And I've thought, man, it would be so much easier if I was, if I was past this and I didn't have to worry about it. And I've had these conversations with God. I need you to know something. In my spirit and in my heart, as hard as it is, I believe very strongly that God wants you and I to know that he built you for this season. You see, God knew you would be here. God knew I would be here. God knew I would be pastoring in this moment. And he built you and anointed you. He set you apart. Because he believed that you would be the people he's called you to be in this season. And so I have to rest assured that God knew we would be here. And that we're going to see it through. We just have to remember that he picked you and I for the dream. Number two is this. God gives you everything you need for the dream. God gives you a dream and vision for the future. He gives you everything you need. You need to know that you're smart enough. That if God gave you this dream, that he has placed things within you that are going to allow you to see it through. You're smart enough. You may say, well, there's things that that still have to happen and there's things I have to learn to get to this place. Sure. Sure. There's going to be growth to get to the dreams that God has given us. He doesn't just hand it to us. It's going to all work out. We've got to do our part, but you need to know you're smart enough to do the process. God's got wisdom for you. The Bible says if you lack lack wisdom to ask him, what if in this season you said, God, I need your wisdom because I don't know how to do this. What if you saw God in it and knew that God was giving you wisdom? You have the right context and the right people in your life. You see, I've realized when we've been trying to put this together on a Sunday, I remember the first week that we talked about doing services online. We had to learn all kinds of things. But what I realized is there was individuals within our church that God had placed there to allow it to happen. That there's staff members that knew how to do things that other people didn't. I'm so thankful for Pastor Josh because he's been able to Help get us through this. And what, you think it's by accident that these things came together? No, God puts the right people in your life. God puts the right people in our church. And even though we don't get together every day, every week, we know that we are still a church family and God placed you here for a reason. And God placed you in Brantford or wherever you're watching this from. You were placed here for a reason and God put the right people around you. Why? Because his dream for you, he cares more about than you do. He'll give you the strength. I need you to know there's mornings where I get up and go, God, if it's not for your strength today, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to power through some of the things I've got to deal with. God will give you the strength that you need. He'll give you the abilities that it's going to take. He's going to give you the direction that you will go. The Bible says that God's word is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. You need to understand something, that God will direct you. And there will be moments where you won't really, you're trying to figure which way to go next. And all of a sudden, it'll just sort of happen. And you'll realize you're in in an area or you're in a moment or you're sitting in a room and God placed you there for a reason. So do not take those moments for granted. Look at every moment of your life as you're dreaming and dreaming big for the future as a moment that God is trying to teach you something. And the last thing that I believe God will give you is a fight. Now, I'm not talking about a fist fight, but I'm talking about an internal fight. To say, come hell or high water, I'm going to see this through. Because hell will not overtake me. I will not allow the enemy to destroy me. And I will fight through this. And I will see the other side. I believe so strongly in my life that God has built a fight in me in this season because I have to see it through. God will build you for what he's called you to. 
Number three is, don't be afraid of the test. God knew they were coming. James 1 verse 3 says it this way, because you knew that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Tests and trials will come, but they will not break you. You have to understand that we're going to deal with tests and trials. I mean, we are in one. But God knew they were coming. God knew we would be in this season and dealing with what we're dealing with. And so you need to know the testing are coming, but it's going to allow you to produce a perseverance to see it through. God knew, and when he looked at the whole future of your life, that you were going to walk through this season of life. And the dreams that he gave you, or the dreams that he's giving you even now, are still part of the plan. It's just this is part of the process. And so we need to realize the tests will come. Number four, God will confirm your dream. God knows you need confirmations. God knows that you need confirmations to see things through. I believe very strongly that God will allow people into your life that will confirm some things for you. And if you're saying to me, I just don't know about this, pray and ask God to confirm the dreams that he's given you. For me, journaling is one of those things that I just, I do often. I write things down. Why? Because I need to be reminded in certain seasons of my life of what God has said to me. And as I've been journaling, I've been looking back at some of the things that have happened, and I realize that God has placed me right here, right now, even though it's tough. He placed me here because he told me about it years ago. I can still remember what it was like to be told that I was coming to Brantford and uh, things that God did to confirm it for me. And in this season, I have looked back at that list and said, God, I know you placed me here. And I know you're confirming the dream in my heart. Keep journaling even today. Because I believe that in this season, you're going to see the promises of God and be reminded of the promises of God. God always, number five, God always follows through. God always follows through. It was funny, when I was pastoring at my former church, because this would never happen at our church. We have amazing parents. They would never do this. But when I was pastoring at my former church, I was, it was in the lobby. We were kind of getting ready to lock up. And this young boy, he's about eight years old, comes up to me and says, do you know where my dad is? And I said, no, uh, but we'll go looking for him. And so we checked the sanctuary. We checked through the building. We couldn't find him. And I said, buddy, I'm just going to text your dad. And I text his dad. And I said, hey, do you know that your son's still here? And his text back was, you're kidding me, right? I said, no, your kid's here. He said, I thought my wife was picking, her, picking him up. You see, these parents had left their eight-year-old at the church. The sad thing was, when well, we can laugh about it today, but the dad was actually in charge of our men's ministries and used to always talk about caring for your kids. And he left his kid at church. Now, if you're watching this and you don't actually attend church, this happens all the time. Kids get left at church, and it's not because the parents don't love them. It's just we've just been distracted, and we got other stuff on the go. But you look at this season, you look at this poor kid, and you go, man, your, your dad forgot you. You need to know that God follows through. And just like we can joke about that young boy, God will never let you down. He will always come through. David, at seven, for 17 years, had to keep reminding himself of the anointing on his life, the things that God had anointed him for, the dream that he had, and that it would come to pass. He had to remind himself and that God would come through and that God would be faithful. And I bet you, at 30 years old, as he sat on the throne for the very first time, he was reminded that God follows through. We also need to be reminded that God's timing is not always our timing. God's timing is not always our timing. Because if it was up to us, we would probably jump ahead and we would miss what God is trying to do in our lives through the process. God's timing is perfect. 
So here's what I want you to leave with today. Don't be afraid to run after your dreams. Don't be afraid to run after your dreams. Don't be afraid to run after the dreams that God has given you. And in this season where everything just seems so wild, don't let the enemy try and destroy or distract you from what your God has anointed and placed in your life. I have had to remind myself some of the things that I've dreamt about, some of the things I believe for my city. I believe that God is going to transform Brantford. I believe with all my heart. And in this season, I've had to remind myself of the dreams and the the desires that I have, and I believe they're God-given desires. Because God will come through, even in difficult times, I can trust him, because he'll be faithful. And so how do we do this? We need to make sure we go through this list. I'm going to read them again. God picked you for this dream. God gives you everything you need for the dream. Don't be afraid of the test. God knew they were coming. God will confirm your dreams. God always follows through. There's a song that we've been singing at the church, and I think it's just timely. It's by Elevation Worship. It's called My Testimony. And one of the lines in the song go like this. It says, if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Each and every one of us have a life worth living. Each and every one of us have God-given blessings and dreams and anointed for the future. Today, realize that as long as I'm on this earth, I have declared in my own life, and I have to remind myself so that I can see clearly that I'm not dead, and God still has great things in store for his church, for his people, And we need to be excited about the future instead of fearful for the future because we know that our future is held in God's hands. And his dreams and his plans for our lives will still come through because God always sees it through. And so in this hard season where you may be wondering about what's next, know that everything, God is in control. Today, If you're here and you're listening to this message and you're wondering about the future, you're wondering about what it's all going to look like, I need you to know you don't have to do this alone and that God actually wants to go with you. And so every week we've been ending a service this way because I just believe your relationship with God matters more than anything. And this is why we do what we do. We as Christians believe that you need to know Jesus so he can walk you through this journey and that you can find yourself in eternal life with him. And so if you would pray this prayer after me, if you ask God into your life, the Bible says he'll transform it and he'll do life with you. Would you pray this prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to come into my life. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that I need you. I confess I haven't done everything right. Change me and make me more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe it's the best prayer that you could ever make because now Jesus is a part of your life. We as a church would love to get some information into your hands. And so all you have to do is email us at info at nlpa.ca. We're going to get some information to you. It's just going to help you grow in your faith. Church family today, I want to end with praying for each and every one of you. But my prayer is as we can't see each other face to face, as we can't see each other, we still know that God has a plan for your life and for mine. The dreams and the things that he has imparted into us, those thoughts that we've had, the hopes that we've had for the future are still there and the enemy will not take it away from us. I still believe that God has a plan for New Life Church like never, ever before. I believe New Life Brantford is going to do incredible things for the kingdom. And we are set apart for a purpose. Even though we can't be in this building, we are still set apart as a group. And so today, my prayer is that God would just allow a fire to burn up within you. Just an excitement to burn up within you. That you would say, my dreams and my God is not dead and he will see me through. And 
The plans he has for me are great because he has a plan and a future for all of us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for my church family. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the dreams. I thank you for the visions that you have for each and every one of us. Today, God, I speak into those things, and I ask that you would help them be revitalized in our hearts, that, God, we wouldn't look at this season and stop praying and stop seeking you and stop believing that you still have plans, but that, God, we would walk in your freedom knowing that the plans you have for us are great. God, we pray your blessing on our church family today. We pray your blessing on those that are watching this today. God, if there's anybody that's struggling, that you would be their peace, their comfort, and their God in whom they trust. Today, God, would you just allow us to sense your presence, give us the strength that we need, because, God, I know you have a purpose and plan for our lives and for our church. And so continue to transform us, make us more like you, so that the world would know that you are God. Church family, I thank God for you. And in this season, I've had to remind these things to myself. Don't think that I don't know in my own life that I have to work these things out. But I'm being reminded every day that God has a plan. He's got a purpose, and he will see us through. God bless you. Thank God for you, and we'll see you next week. Well, thanks so much for joining us this week. I don't know about you, but that message was so encouraging and just what I needed to hear. Well, if you're new with us today or you've been joining us for the last few weeks, we'd love to connect with you. You can head on over to nlpa.ca to fill out our new here card so that we can welcome you to the family with a little gift. Did you love our service today? We hope that you did and would join us in spreading the message of Jesus to others by simply clicking share on our Facebook video link. Let's share the link and spread the hope together. Are you missing your pastors? Because they sure are missing you. Join us on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. on our Facebook page to connect with Pastor Mark and Erica and chat a little bit together before service. Well, that's it for today, but let's stay connected with one another online throughout the week. We love you guys and we're praying for you. See you next Sunday.